Ah. An ambassador from America. Good heavens, what a sound. Oh, they call me a vain imposter and a Pharisee of liberty. It's an idiotic phrase. The Morning Post and Daily Advertiser. Ah, they very helpfully inform their readers that I was so pitifully embarrassed as to be very nearly tongue-tied. You must pay them no mind, sir. They accuse me of vanity. They always accuse me of vanity. Well, there are, uh, there are many different kinds of vanity in this world. But there is also the vanity that comes from years spent in the service of other men. And of that, I am most certainly guilty. Guilty as charged. To deny that would be sheer hypocrisy. <laughs> there is someone calling for me to be hanged. Colonel Smith, Post remove case. these papers at once. Sharp. God, what a country! Charming! You had a peaceful journey, yeah. sir? Yes, yes. <laughs> Father, this is Thomas. Of course. <laughs> Thomas? My oh boy, my goodness, well, you've Not grown, isn't no. it, yeah? It's been a long time, Yes, Father. indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Welcome home. John Quincy. Oh, the... Good. Yeah. My boys. My boys. Welcome home, Father. Be it that you would not know me. Nonsense. On the contrary, no, I... I, uh, I am amazed. Mother? Um... Colonel William Smith, who has been my private secretary, uh, my sons, my daughter Nelly, Colonel Smith. Have it now, shall we? Come, come, come. Oh. Nelly, yes? Charles, Thomas, follow in the next carriage, yes? I'm smiling, Miss Adams. <laughs> Do I not have reason to be happy, Colonel Smith? Our family is so rarely together. Your brothers seem to be men of good spirit, Charles especially. My brother Charles can be rather incorrigible and be as headstrong as father. Well, Mr. Adams has the vitality of a much younger man. Some days it's all I can do to keep up with him. Father says you commanded a regiment of our army. Yes, I had the honor to serve under General Washington at Long Island. Perhaps you will allow me to divert you with stories from the campaign, if you would not find them too dull. That depends on the telling, does it not, Colonel Smith? <laughs> <clears throat> I've had the usual salutation, your humble servant, etc., etc. Yes, sir. Mm. Thank you, Colonel Smith. That's all for now. Uh, perhaps I may indulge your patience with uh, personal requests, mm -hmm. sir. A matter I've been meaning to broach with you for some time now. <laughs> An increase in your meagre salary is quite out of the question, Colonel. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that, sir. Though I am without fame or fortune, such as I am, I aspire to your daughter's love. I beg your pardon? My daughter... What's that about my daughter? You mean to say, you vetoed? Madam, the great honor you have conferred upon the bridegroom and the bride by being present at this solemnity is very conveniently supersede any further inquiry after your consent. The part I am desired to take in this wedding renders the way of my giving consent very compendious. There is no manner or room left for the previous question who giveth this woman to be married to this man? 
Give me your hand for a moment, and to the bridegroom forever. Now joined in matrimony, let us say the Lord's Prayer. You will be pleased to hear, Father, that some interesting investment prospects have presented themselves for me in London. But you're... you're leaving. So soon after the wedding. I frown on speculation. It is nothing more than rolling in luxury on the, on the property of others. You should settle on a profession, Colonel Smith, as my sons have. Well, naturally, I would postpone any trip if I could be of some service to the government. Perhaps you could put a word in with General Washington. And how on earth would I justify that? Well, my sister and I are now family. Well, I, I have no say in the matter. And even if I did, I could not allow my authority to become subservient to my private views, sir. William was only saying Yes, I know what he was saying. Abby, and he has my answer. And when will you give me your answer, Miss Smith? What is the question, Mr. Adams? <laughs> May I be among the first to offer you my support in this difficult time for our country? Should it come to war with France, I would be honored to serve on the Army's general staff. Yeah, ma'am. Well, should such a necessity arise, excuse me, the Senate will vote on those matters. I will not influence the decision one way or the other. I ask you only to vouchsafe my character, sir. That I can no longer do. I beg your pardon? That I can no longer do. Fetch me my folio, Colonel. Certainly, sir. No doubt you are a fine soldier and were an able secretary to me. Sir, but you have bankrupted yourself in the pursuit of easy riches. Your reputation is much damaged. I own that I have made some poor investments, but I am hardly alone in that misfortune. If you had applied yourself to steady employment in a respectable occupation... Perhaps if you'd shown some regard for my advancement, such employment might have been more easily found. You have the temerity to blame me. A word from you would have done me much good. I will not and cannot countenance your ceaseless efforts to trade on our family name. You have had no hesitation in finding preferment for your own sons. Whether they have merited the effort or not. I have nothing more to say to you, sir. Good day. I'm afraid I must beg your indulgence longer than I expected, Mrs. Adams. I would consider it a great favor if my wife and children could remain at Peacefield. I care not for my own comfort, but it would pain me greatly to see them suffer because of my failures. Of course. The moment I am able, I shall take their care upon myself. William, I do, I do not understand. I must leave you. Leave us? Why? My disappointments have blackened my name, as your father has made all too clear. If I'm to begin again, it must be somewhere where I am less known. Where will you go? <laughs> Some prospects in the West? William, surely there must be something. I have no choice, Mammy. William, please. I have no choice. If you will excuse me. Please stay, Mrs. Adams. I know your husband is not alone in his opinion of me.
There is much to do. Please excuse me. Our children will want for nothing. At the very least, I owe her memory that. She never lost her faith in you. No. I'm sorry she could not live to see my success. Our luck, it seemed, had changed at last. I am sorry too, Colonel. 